Tonight we're going vintage with meatloaf. Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight we're doing a vintage meal, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. As always, the ingredients list is listed on the screen and the full recipe can be found at the channel's website, homestylecookingwithjen.com. If you enjoy recipe videos, give me a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And if you wanna see more of my recipes, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. As always, if you have any cooking related questions or wanna see a particular recipe on the channel, let me know in the comments down below and who knows, you may be featured in a future video. All right, let's get started. To begin. Again, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. Then prepare your bread loaf pan. I usually do this by spraying it with a little cooking spray. Now it's time to make the meatloaf. In a medium bowl, place your ground beef, then your Lipton soup mix, breadcrumbs, egg, water, and ketchup. And the only thing left to do is to combine all your ingredients. You want to be sure to mix your beef mixture well. You want to be sure that all of your ingredients are well combined and the best tool for this are your hands. Touching raw meat makes you a little squeamish. Just uh, get yourself some food grade kitchen gloves and that will help a little bit or you can use a spoon or a spatula. It'll just take 12,000 years. Once your meat mixture is thoroughly combined it's time to put it in the pan. The easiest way I found to do this is to shape your mixture into a ball or a lump and plop it in the center of your loaf pan and then begin pushing gently and evenly across the bottom of the pan. So I start in the center and work my way out. Take your time with this. We are looking for an even layer of meat across the bottom. This ensures that the meat is evenly cooked and there aren't any raw pockets. Once you have your meat mixture out to the edges, make a well along the sides of the pan. This will give the grease somewhere to go and it's very simple. Just use the side of the pan as a guide and push down to make a finger width well around your entire meatloaf. Once you have your beef mixture the way you want it, place it in the oven and cook it for approximately one hour or until it's cooked completely through. While the meatloaf is in the oven, I thought I'd give you a bonus tutorial. There aren't any exact measurements with this, but you have to have mashed potatoes with meatloaf. I swear, it's a law somewhere. Making mashed potatoes is pretty straightforward. Just chop your mashed potatoes into even pieces. The size really doesn't matter. You just want them all to cook at the same time and cover them with water in a pot. I use a pretty large pot because we love mashed potatoes, but choose the size that works best for the amount that you're cooking. Boil your potatoes for approximately 15 to 20 minutes or until they are cooked completely through. The easiest way to check if they're cooked is to poke a fork or a knife into a piece of potato and if you don't meet any resistance then your potatoes are done. My potatoes are cooked completely through and what you see me doing on the screen is going through and picking out the garlic cloves. We like a light garlic flavored in our potatoes so what I do is put two to three cloves in the potato water and let the garlic infuse the potatoes with the flavor. This doesn't leave a strong flavor, but you still get a nice hint. Once I have fished all the garlic cloves out, it's time to add the ingredients. Now, I have not measured these ingredients in 15 years, so I have no idea how much I use. I really just eyeball it. But for classic mashed potatoes, I use butter, heavy cream, milk, salt, pepper, and sour cream. To make the mashed potatoes, I make sure that the boiled potatoes are extremely hot. Then I add all of the ingredients but the sour cream and get my hand mixed out. I mix on high until it is the consistency I want, tasting as I go. Once the potatoes are the consistency I like, I taste it for one last time, figure out that it's missing something, and then add the sour cream that I forgot in the beginning. Then I fold the sour cream in and the potatoes are done. One quick tip, I usually don't start making my mashed potatoes until the meatloaf has been in the oven for approximately 30 minutes and you're about to find out why. After an hour, take your meatloaf out of the oven and set it aside to rest for approximately 10 minutes. This will give you time to finish your mashed potatoes and then you can serve. There's nothing fancy about meatloaf, 
so there shouldn't be anything fancy about the presentation. Just place a couple of pieces of meatloaf on your plate, add a spoonful of the mashed potatoes, and that's dinner. So I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and is always well fed.